Testing one, two, three. Hello, hello. Mind shift will be starting in just a moment. This is the part during an in-person event where you're usually told to please silence your cell phones and take your seats. But since this is virtual, there are just way more distractions and stuff around you. So I'll say this. Please finish making your coffee, carry your laptop and your mug back to your desk, being very careful not to spill, unless your desk is your kitchen table, which means you're probably going to get that weird sensation where your elbows and wrists fall asleep because you're making T-Rex arms when you type and scroll and click for the next few months. Also, please ensure the dog has been walked, the cat has been fed, the rabbit is back in his crate, and the kids, well, that's frowned upon, so just let them roam free and hope and pray that they're excited to watch Moana for the 47th time this week without making a sound or breaking anything or generally endangering their lives or yours and oh shoot we forgot about the coffee back in the kitchen okay turn around head back down or maybe grab a water instead don't forget your headphones speaking of grabbing stuff N not those the good ones you're gonna want to hear this really well shoot where are they over here now maybe they're back in the kitchen the kitchen your coffee never mind that now we're starting so soon so please silence your cell phone or keep it on or balance it on your nose like a train seal because it doesn't matter when nobody can see you. But you're gonna see us really soon because we're starting in five, four, three, two. Hey there, and welcome to Mind Shift. Sorry about our voiceover guy. He's just really excited. He misses being around people. So he got a little over the top there. I am your host, Jay Akunzo. I am the author of the book, Break the Wheel, the host behind the podcast, Unthinkable, and very many other digital and in-person projects. And I hope you're doing okay. I hope your loved ones are doing okay. I hope it continues to be that way for you and yours. Hang in there. And like many of you, I've been adjusting. And while I do this pretty often, usually it's not in here. You know, lots of times when I'm speaking or hosting a show or an event, I'm traveling to be with people like you in person. And it's there on a stage or on a shoot that I can let my Italian Americanness really come out and be loose and with it and with you. Uh, it's there I can bring my full self to the work. The thing is, I struggled early on in my career to bring my full self to the work. Maybe you've experienced something similar too. And it turns out it was all due to this same psychological barrier that lots of us face when we're trying to make tough choices, choices that I think we're making more and more right now. But before we get to that psychological concept that I uncovered, let's take a trip down awkward memory lane, shall we? Let me take you back to 2014, to the sunny, tropical paradise that is Cleveland, Ohio. This is me looking kind of sloppy on stage at an event with my hand in my pocket, hand in my pocket again. Later on, my hand is still in my pocket, hand in my pocket again. Oh, my hand is out. Did I finally fix the problem? No, there it goes, right back in there. You should definitely hire that guy. Why did I do that? I remember being new to public speaking at the time, and it was then that I started looking at what experts would recommend new speakers do, and one of the things was to master a technique called blocking, which is when you establish different areas on the stage as having different types of meaning to the audience, and you're supposed to move to one location and stay there a while and sit still and make a point before you move on. And so my effort to sit still as someone who's super energetic was to cram my hand into my pocket. But sit still, that's not who I am. I'm way too energetic to do that, to sit still for a minute and make a point. I'm also Italian American, like I said before. So if I stop moving these, I just stop talking entirely. The thing is, I removed that. I ignored my own sense of self-awareness and situational awareness, and I went seeking my answers out there. Why? I think I had Pike syndrome. That's the psychological barrier standing between us and making better choices for our work, especially when the pressure mounts. Imagine a pike swimming around an aquarium. If you drop some minnows into the tank, the pike will eat them right away. But if you lower in those minnows surrounded by glass, the pike can't see the glass and he just starts smashing up against it over and over and over again. He'll do this for hours until he decides that I guess minnows aren't things that I can eat. And then you can remove the glass and the minnows can swim all around the tank undisturbed by the pike. Tasty little morsels are swimming right in front of his nose and he doesn't move so much as an inch. This explains a concept called learned helplessness. And I think we all suffer from a degree of learned helplessness in our work. 
From the moment we're taught in school there's a right and a wrong answer, well, that's how we approach every task at work, no matter how ever-changing the world is or complex things get, no matter how creative we have to be. There must be a right and a wrong answer. We are living at a time of infinite supposed right answers from anybody with a Wi-Fi connection, not to mention everyone who came before us. That's incredibly overwhelming. This dark side of the information age has started to surface. Advice, advice overload. overload. Ugh. And in that era of infinite advice and possibilities, infinite right answers, what could we possibly do? So we go seeking our answers out there. But tasty little morsels are swimming right in front of our noses. Little insights, key variables that are only present in first-hand situations, in our unique contexts. Those are things that the expert and the generalized wisdom out there do not take into account when they tell us that they have the right answer for us. And those are the things we can use to make better decisions. It turns out in a world full of infinite possibilities, one of the most powerful skills that we can all develop is knowing how to vet them. We don't need more ideas and answers. We need to know how to make sense of all the chaos and noise and stress. But we don't have a system in place for making those types of decisions, so we use a shortcut that we call the best practice. And our hope for best practices is they make our work look like this. We're doing the work day to day, it gets difficult, things get unclear, but then we find the best practice and implement it and suddenly we're taken away to the promised land where finally we see our best results. That is our hope for best practices. But our reality? That looks a lot more like, well, this. Over and over again, we look for the tried and true, the tips and tricks, the cheats and hacks, the gurus with their get there quick schemes. And we just keep hoping and praying that one of them one time will deliver as promised. And each of these supposed right answers are just spokes on a wheel. First one is on top and you have to listen to that one, then another, then another, and on and on this wheel spins. And we can cling to the conventional wisdom of our choosing, but get crushed as the world turns. So we can keep reaching out to every new trend that comes up, but never firmly grasp anything in our work. And if we're not careful, well, this wheel can spin completely out of control. And I don't know about you, but it definitely feels like it is right now. And this wheel leads straight to the one place we don't want our careers or our companies to be. Average. We have to break this wheel and make better choices. Remember, finding best practices is not the goal. Finding the best approach for you is. Throughout this event and well beyond, remember this one thing. To make sure we're making the best choices for us, stop acting like experts and start acting like investigators. See, experts know what works in general or on average. They think about the absolutes, and that's helpful to a degree. But investigators, they don't care about absolutes. They care about evidence. They are on the case. So what if... Instead of looking for everyone else's right answers for us, we asked ourselves the right questions. Then we would stop acting like experts and start acting like investigators. That is what this moment requires. Today, we each face a choice. We can let the future happen to us or we can build it. Let's all agree right now, starting in this moment, to be the types of people who in the face of adversity and uncertainty, we don't ask what is the best practice. We ask what is the best practice for us. We're willing to raise our hands and admit, hey, I don't have the answers, but I know how to figure it out. Let's go. My name is Jay Akonzo. I'm so excited to be your host and MC. Thank you for your attention and your support today, and welcome to MindShift. A few things to know before we start today. First, the event experience. You're experiencing MindShift on the On24 webinar console. You can customize your screen at any time, resizing and moving windows around as you wish. You'll also have a set of buttons available to you at the bottom of your screen, which ON24 calls engagement tools. That's where you can interact with the webinar, including downloading several resources about running your own virtual events 
and about how you can produce more elevated, more immersive virtual talks yourself, similar to many that you'll see today. I don't know about you, but I've had enough of the webinar and webcam blandness that's replacing great physical events. Also, when you're watching a speaker, be sure to check out the dedicated widget to learn more about each one of them. And speaking of speakers, we've asked incredible and generous people to put together really short, really powerful talks exploring big ideas relevant for this moment in time. They've donated their time, and in some cases their dollars, to support COVID relief through this event. So please, support them back. Use the hashtag MindShift to share their wisdom on social media. Thank you also to our two presenting sponsors, On24 and Epic Keynotes. And thank you to our supporting sponsors who made this event possible and donated to the cause. Now that you understand the event experience, please note the COVID relief donation widget on your screen. We understand that everybody's situation is different, but if you're able, every dollar is appreciated. All donations go right to the World Health Organization's COVID-19 Response Fund. Please consider donating what you can or what you feel the value of today's event is worth to you. Thank you. And thank you to every organization, speaker, sponsor, and attendee for donating their time, dollars, or both in support of this cause. Now let's get to some serious inspiration and brilliant big ideas. Our next speaker is Mariana Atencio. Mariana is a Peabody award-winning journalist who has spent the last decade reporting on the most volatile conflicts of our time at both NBC News and Univision Fusion. Her first book, Perfectly You, Embracing the Power of Being Real, is a call to action for each of us to unlock the magic of our own potential. Her TEDx talk on authenticity, What Makes You Special, is one of the top 10 most watched on YouTube and has now been translated into 11 languages. In 2018, she co-founded Go Like, a production company dedicated to sharing uplifting messages of inclusiveness and connection through original productions in TV and digital media. It is my honor to introduce to you one of the most driven, creative, and forceful voices of our time. Sit back and enjoy Mariana Atencio.